special board meeting to order for March 29th, 2021. Currently with the board, we've got John Schmann, David Sawyer. Uh, is Flo on? I don't see her on here. Yes, he yeah. she was, yeah. Okay, we've got Flo and myself. Uh, any additions or changes to the agenda that we're aware of? None. Okay. I do have a change. Okay. Okay, um, I want to remove the approval of license permits and vouchers. I don't have any payables for you. Right. Um, can we remove liquor licenses as well? Yeah. yeah. Vince, Vince used the regular uh, meeting agenda that we kind of have formatted. We can remove uh, liquor licenses, license permits, vouchers, and we can also probably remove minutes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, any public comment? All right. Hearing none, we have uh, first on the agenda, well, we removed the treasurer's report as well, right, Diane? Yeah, yeah, might just as well. Yeah, yeah. So the community rating system update, here we go. So the, the planning commission met Saturday morning and um, they approved the draft language change <clears throat> to add a, a foot of free board for utilities. And uh, they sent that to through Vince to the select board. Um, uh, and Vince has scheduled a, a meeting for the select board, a public hearing on April 12th. I think it's at 7 p.m., but it's just a reminder to the select board that that, that you will be having a, a hearing on that um, on April 12th. <clears throat> okay. Anything else on it? Um, no, it was pretty... Were, were, we, were we having this special meeting to meet the warning so that we could have that public hearing? Was that the, the reason? That's correct, yep. To, to get the credit for the CRS to get us from a class nine to a class right. eight. All right. Anything else from the board? All right. So uh, next on the agenda, we have the new town center discussion. Yes, the uh, I believe Vince sent around to the select board. The conditions that the agency staff placed on the town of Berlin's new town center application. And um, some of those conditions um, have impacts, not only on the town of Berlin, but also the, the partners that we have. And many of the partners are here tonight. Um, Ken Simon from the mall, uh, Jim Alvarez, from CBMC, Julie uh, Curtin from uh, Down Street Housing. Uh, there's probably Jason's here to Lazar as, as well. So, so I think that the, uh, well, what the planning commission would like to do is, is go over those conditions, make the select board aware of, of impacts to that. Um, once we get through these conditions, if the, if the partners would like to, to talk and address any items, uh, we'd ask the, the partners here to, to uh, uh, weigh in on it. Uh, so there's were eight conditions. One of the conditions had numerous parts, um, but the, the first three conditions deal with the boundaries of the of the new town center. You may recall that uh, we plan for for really probably since the inception of of this to include par parcel owned by CVMC south of Fisher Road and uh, a good good portion of their medical campus north of Fisher Road. Um, the state is recommend the the staff is recommending uh, to the downtown board that the properties 
controlled, owned and controlled by CVMC be removed from our designated area. And what that does, how that impacts the, the town of Berlin, and, and again, we'll let CVMC talk about how that impacts them, but um, you may recall one of the, the main features of getting a designation is the town's ability to, to seek a tax increment financing district, um, which allows you to, to uh, the town in effect to, to pay for um, much, some of the, the development that's anticipated in, in the new town center. An example of this is that um, if the senior housing project uh, that's going up now would have been part of the TIP district, it, it has it's, has a, uh, an estimated value of, of uh, $12 million. The, um, if it was in the TIF district, the town of Berlin would likely see about $200,000 of, of that revenue to go towards projects. $200,000 in revenues pays, pays for about $5 million of infrastructure improvement. Um, so the, the town losing the capacity to, to um, have as robust the TIF district has financial impacts on the town. And, um, so with quick question, um, with central Vermont, not paying property taxes on a, on a lot of the properties, obviously, does that, that doesn't impact the TIF district? If, if they would build, and if you, if you looked at uh, the, the concept uh, design, they had a, a medical building, which would probably be exempt for prop taxes, but they also had a cluster of um, uh, income producing properties that would be that would have been included for the for the tip. That's correct. Did you send Did you send the board uh, or Vince a copy of the new boundaries? I know Vince had it. I I, I didn't personally send it to the board. Brandy, Brandy, can you pull that up on your screen? I'm going to ask Brandy to to pull that up. I can. And just give me one moment. Hey, Trace. And it also eliminated the, the, the coals uh, parcel as well. It's at the edge of the mall, basically. Yeah. On the, on the, and the car lot. So it should be up on the screen now. It, it is, yes. Yep. Yep. It really impacts the I think the functionality of the of the new town centers we envision that the the it, it adversely impacts the town green that was there. Um, um, oh, you, we lost you there, Brandon. I'm sorry. I was going to try to pull up the the site the full site plan so you could see. Yeah. yeah. So but this one... this line bisects the development that was was planned down there so it 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 um, interferes with the street layout and and such as well so it is um, a bit of a technical problem that line right so fun functionally right. I mean it does interfere with those other properties I'm just curious um, I mean we can still design and lay out as we'd like over there potentially, right? With the, a good partnership. I'm just curious overall. I mean, 
we're going to design around the new town center, but you can also design around future development, like over on the central Vermont property or over on Lamberton's property, right? I mean, we, it's part of the design that we do is going to be planning for development in those surrounding areas, correct? The Lamberton property w was discounted just because of the wetlands issue. Um, right, I understand yep. why it's not, we've already established why it wasn't in the town center, but you understand what I'm saying, I, I suppose. But the, any development on right now under designation tip, uh, the only properties that would be uh, eligible for a tip under the designation would be in this orange shaded area. So that, but didn't you, just, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you just say that the elderly, the assisted living wasn't in that, but it, it falls right to this, in this shaded area? It, it's not in it, but it, it was an example of what it, it could have brought. Well, it's to. not in it because we don't have the TIF district. Yeah. Oh, we have to get okay. the designation first. Okay. But, but it's so, being built prior to the TIF. Right. So it, it, it will not be eligible. So looking at that shaded area, if you're coming in from the 802 property, that line is about where that entrance is down in that lower end, correct? Yeah, this is the the access road that goes behind the mall is right here. Yeah. Okay. That's comes what it's behind. Thought. Yep. And then this is the it, it comes across here um, straight at the edge of the parking lot. And then the line between the mall and the hospital properties. And so the challenge that the town would face here is that the Newtown Center plan envisioned a continuous street network extending into this property which uh, theoretically would, and, and the path network as well and sidewalks, um, some of those elements would be to some extent supported uh, through municipal funding and or be the, the property owner uh, may want to turn them over to the town. And if they're not in the TIF generating, revenue generating portion, then you're looking at facilities that you don't, you're not generating revenue off of to offset the costs of. So that's the, the challenge from the town's perspective. How much did they actually cut out of the original thing? Did that incorporate the 802 property and armory in that whole area? Not the armory, yes. but- Let me pull up the full map. Actually, I think, is it up here? It might be up here. I mean, I think I've seen it before. Oh, a year or so yep. ago when I met with you guys. Uh, I remembered it was quite, seemed like it was quite bigger than what, you know, yep. I guess. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. So the line that they're proposing basically cuts it in half. So um, it comes <clears throat> through here and then comes down here. So it's only the southern half. And what's the reasoning behind that, cutting that down like that? They, they had a concern that uh, Fisher Road uh, was not as pedestrian friendly as requirements as required by the Newtown Center. You may recall that as before your time, Dave, but the, the select board applied for a VTRANS grant to to, uh, to study Fisher Road, and particularly that pedestrian crossing at Berlin Mall Road and Fisher Road. Um, and uh, just, it was either Tuesday or Wednesday of last week, we found out that we were awarded that grant to do that study, but that was after the fact of the uh, staff recommending that the uh, CVMC campus north of Fisher Road be taken out. So th they they want they want that road to be more pedestrian friendly. I I personally think it can be done, um, but you know you, you ha we have to do the study and and you know look at all the things that go into making it more friendly. And they also um, are looking for the hospital's master plan to be complete. Mm -hmm and want to be able to see that um, presented here 
and uh, will then do a similar review of, which they did not do, of the zoning standards um, to see if they meet. And based on their feedback to some of the zoning pieces, I think that may require further negotiations down the road um, between trying to balance what the state uh, will want uh, and what the hospital needs. Yeah, we had, we had some very extensive talks with the hospital. They, they have specialty needs with medical campus with respect to roads, um, access of their clients to their buildings, parking, um, and a lot of time went into developing those regulations and those negotiations, which we, we eventually arrived at and then have baked into our zoning regulations that were adopted in January. Um, but again, the, the, the staff, um, they didn't even review those regulations because they redefined that line taking the CDMC properties out of the new town center. Well, but I do think that they viewed the zoning in that area as not compliant with the town center, what we had done, right? I mean, isn't that accurate? They didn't provide a detailed review of it, but that is my sense as well. <clears throat> so to go forward, let's just, what is, I, so we don't get hung up on this on the CVN. To go forward, what are the other boundary requirements? Number one, and number two, is it possible that in throughout the process to bring that into the TIF, TIF district in a future if these requirements are met? or make state standards? Well, with respect to bringing it in in the future, um, you, I spoke to the um, Newtown Center coordinator for city of South Burlington today. And uh, she advised me that once you set a, uh, the, 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 the boundaries of a TIF district, you, you can not expand it. Um, so if we wanted the TIF district to, to look as it is portrayed here on the, on the map, it would probably delay us a couple of years of, of applying for that TIF district. Um, or you could begin applying sooner than that, but you lose half of the potential value of your, of your TIF district. So that, that's um, a Go ahead. Tom, can you just back up and explain that the idea is that we would be adding back the hospital? I don't, I don't think we've talked about that. Yes, I mean, the idea would be we'd add back the hospital. Okay. Um, to the Newtown you can Center. You can expand the Newtown Center the area. And so they've provided some guidance on what they would want to, what we would have to do to expand first south of Fisher Road and get so, so Payne Turnpike would be the, I mean, um, Fisher Road would be the boundary and then for, and then beyond that, the, uh, the medical campus. Right, and then it would just be excluded from the TIF district. That's all, or, right? Or we'd have to wait to apply. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. <clears throat> what was the hospital's reaction? Jim Alvarez is on the call. Yeah. Um... I guess for us, the real issue is the 12 acre parcel. You know, we've studied it and determined not to develop it because there's just too many constraints on it. But in partnership with the town square, then it has some possibilities. We probably would not develop it ourselves. We would probably sell it to a developer, then lease back part of it. And so I think that's probably the most, uh, you know, interesting part of this whole thing is that that parcel on its own just doesn't have the access that we need. Um, so it really needs to be looked at as part of the town square to ever be a, a, a functional um, developable parcel. Um, so, you know, right now we just use it as a utility yard, you know, so it holds our uh, um, gas storage and, and some Connex boxes. Um, but we have no intention of developing it because when we studied it, uh, there was no access from Fisher Road that would make it feasible to build anything there. So it really needs to be connected back to the town square to be a, a parcel that could be used. Randy, can you just outline th that, th their lot? This, yeah. Yes. 
this year. So how did they arbitrarily come up with this? I mean, this line that they've does as a new town center, seeing that you guys have done all your work or the planning commission has done their work. How did they eliminate this bigger picture and just randomly come up with this boundary? How, how was that arrived at? You'd have to ask them. <laughs> so there's really no good answer of why they, they did what they did, I guess. I think in their okay. mind, I think in their mind's eye, there was, but I, I can tell you when these conditions came out, we had no inkling that the removal of the CBMC properties were even being thought about. Okay. Well, I guess, okay. Well, I guess we need to hear some more of the other conditions. <laughs> this is where we've got the boundaries, but we'll find out what the other troubling issues are, I guess. So, Brandy, you want to pull up those conditions again? Okay. Which, yeah. let me see. We're, oh, at, no, we're at number four I'll, now. Four. I'll put it back on. Yep. And this is Eileen from CDMC. I just wanted to add that one of the other complicating factors for us as we move into the master planning process is, you know, we would have to make a decision to either consider that parcel in our master planning or not based on a hope or a dream that it would then be included in the town center, that they would then accept it for inclusion. So that's going to be, that would be a difficult thing for us to navigate when we really get to the point of our master plan, whether or not to take that risk. Adding thank, that. Thank, thank you, Eileen. So, so Brandy, you want to walk through the number four here? So condition four um, has eight, I think, subparts. Um, and these all relate to um, the zoning. Um, the first three, A, B, and C, um, relate to the C street standards and the standards for on-street parking. Um, the, the requirement would be to eliminate um, the C street classification from within the town center. Um, right now, there that's an allowed street type. It has a certain set of dimensional standards that go along with it. And it's... Um, each end of the Berlin Mall Road is, is classified that way and potentially new streets could be classified um, as C streets if, um, if that worked within the overall plan. Um, then the A and B streets are in the core area, so in front of the mall and in that new block area. And those are of a much more urban, what I would sort of classify as an urban built form. So they're meant to, to encourage more sort of commercial block buildings or those larger residential buildings that are shown in the plan. And they're set up with the dimensional standards to produce that form of development. So the state is requesting that all streets in the um, Newtown Center area be essentially A or B streets. The P streets is that pedestrian street um, option, which is sort of like a church street type option um, that would be just be, not be vehicular. Um, so basically A or, or B streets, um, which, which dictates the types of buildings that you could build in the Newtown Center. They're going to be larger buildings. Um, smaller detached buildings aren't going to be possible to build. Mm -hmm. um, so the, uh, the last one then also deals with the on-street parking. So C deals with on-street parking. Um, they are going to uh, requ require that you mandate on street parking on A and B streets. Um, so anytime a street is built or is reconstructed, it would have to include on street parking. And there's a few places um, on the site plan uh, where that doesn't really make a lot of sense because in many ways that that circulation is around a big parking lot. And so if you're putting in on street parking, you're basically taking parking spaces out of the parking lot in order to make room to put parking lanes on the street. Um, so it's a, just a shifting and a shuffling around 
of parking and it would probably reduce overall parking. But in any event, that's the requirements um, for A, B, and C. Um, D, E, and F. Um, D relates to curbing and stormwater um, treatment. We think that the regulations already do this. They don't. So it's a matter of trying to figure out what it is that they think it needs to say that it doesn't say. It's not obvious to me what that is. Um, and E and F deal with development envelopes. And also here, the same thing is true. They, they're trying to get to the point where you're not, where they're ensuring that all buildings are fronting on a street and there's not any rear buildings. They've been pretty distressed about the uh, the state reviewers about the both the hospital and mall being kind of campus type developments. So multiple buildings on the lot, um, whereas they're really looking for sort of a, a lot with a building on it, each one, <laughs> one, one, one to one uh, relationship. And so these are some, some language around that. We're not even completely sure what it would take to uh, in the regulations to change wise to, to meet these rules because we don't really understand how they've come up with these or what they how they have interpreted the rules to think that um, it is possible to build a building that isn't on a street. Um, but in any event, that's D, E, and F. Um, G relates to adding um, a little bit more street to your official map that you adopted. This is doable. Um, it's not going to, to really be that um, meaningful because in reality, all it does is give you um, in the town the right to, to buy that right of way should the developer want to build on it. Um, and you have to do that really fast. So it, it's actually um, not really that, that effective. It, it, so putting that on isn't a problem. So it's really A through F that are issues. So you mentioned that it was it might be difficult to navigate some of these regular because we're not really sure what they're asking. So how could we possibly accept these new conditions given that? I'm just curious. I think that that is a challenge. We did meet with them on Friday in hopes of trying to get some clarification and maybe better understand what it is they're looking for and come up with ways to achieve that, uh, that both worked for the town and, and, and got what they wanted at the end of it. Uh, they were not interested in having that conversation with us. And so it's our understanding it's a take it or leave it uh, with what's presented here. Right, so when you said some of these conditions, I guess I'm confused. Um, you weren't really sure what they were saying or asking. Right. Would they give us further clarification down the road. I, that would be, have to be the hope, Justin. I mean, that's, and, and I, that, and I that, think, if, if we agreed to it, that that's what would happen. Yes. And basically, what Brandy's saying is her under the way she interprets the regulations. These 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 requirements already exist, but they somehow are reading it differently. So we'd have to just clarify you know, if there's specific language they want in there or um, if they're just misunderstanding something. But like she said, they weren't willing to discuss the conditions on Friday. Okay. In, in a post COVID world where we could all sit in a room and discuss this, I, do, right. I think, do I think a, a more common ground could be found? I, I would hope so, but again, you, you, I, you don't know, right? You don't know at the end of the day. Right. What, uh, what other conditions are we facing? So five and six are straightforward and are not issues. They are what we would anticipate, the types of conditions that would be typical on these applications. So five and six are non-problematic. Seven and eight, They've attempted to write conditions Can you go over five and six for us, just so we oh, understand. Oh yeah. It? Okay, five is just the stuff that you're going to need to do at your four-year review. So the the um, Newtown Center applications get re they're good for eight years if you get a um, 
approval. And every four years at a minimum, there's a check-in. There's a midway check-in. And so they were requesting that you do an update as to basically where you are on all the various elements. So an update on the capital improvement program, you know, an update on development reviews, what's occurred, you know, what you've permitted, et cetera, within the area. Um, the, an update in your case on what, how you're progressing on the municipal facility requirement. So that's all standard um, and, and, and normal to be expected. And then six, I mean, this is, we sort of understand that this is, is, is sort of a de facto, <laughs> it's a statement of fact. If um, the mall ha has to seek um, an Act 250 permit amendment, if the, that fails to happen, or if there are conditions on their permit that affect the development of the new town center as envisioned, you would have to go back um, and uh, seek an amendment of the new town center uh, from the board. We were expect we expected language along those lines. So seven and eight, um, they attempt to tie the property owners' hands within the new town center and prevent them from using the um, designation um, as a basis um, for trying to get changes to their existing permits. So basically aimed at the mall um, and their need to go in and get um, a permit amendment to remove some of the no build uh, areas from the, their original 1985 approval. Um, they, these two conditions, while they're on the, their conditions placed on the town, they really are actually an attempt to place conditions on the property owners within the new town center. I think they're of dubious legal uh, validity, but they're there. <clears throat> okay. So, I mean, what does what does the board think of it? I mean, what is our what is the how's the how's the mall feel? Can we get some input? On these areas and how they, it'll impact them as well. Well, we, we've heard we've heard from the um, uh, Jim Alvarez in, in the hospital. We also have the folks here from Downstreet Housing because that's that's the project is which is really it, uh, ready to go, right? Yeah. So uh, I thought I yeah, Julie's here. Do you do you want to talk about the about this from a respected and Nicola's here? I see. You want to talk about th these conditions and, and impact on on your project. And you're on mute, Julie. Thank you for that catch of the mute. <laughs> um, and yeah, thanks, Tom, for um, inviting us to speak about our project. So we have our Fox Run project. It's a 30 unit residential project um, that's been under development for um, several years now. And we're We've, uh, we're on the threshold of getting the funding that we would need in order to build the project um, applications in to um, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency for tax credits and, um, and for Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. Um, it's and our funding applications are, you know, it's our, our understanding that those funders are looking to the new town center designation um, to happen before uh, we get funding. So, you know, we're, and, and we see the project as part of the new town center. So we very much want the designation. Um, you know, we're, we're building housing, uh, you know, this will be affordable housing, a mix of family um, and, and individual households. But, you know, really, we feel strongly that the project is putting housing where people can walk to jobs, can walk to services. Um, you know, they're going to be living in the place that they go to school, they're close to the school. And so, um, you know, we really see our project as a, as a component of the new town center. So, so we're, we're at a critical moment where we, you know, we, we're really wanting to see the designation. Um, and we, you know, we think, you know, we're, we're also, um, the region really needs the housing. So we're hoping it'll move forward. Would would this project not go through if we didn't get the designation of Newtown Center? That that is 
Yeah, that is our understanding. We're, we're all, things are, uh, things are so in flux with, with funding for housing now, and we don't know what, maybe there are new sources that could come along and that it would be different. But I, I think what, what um, our funders really uh, prioritize development in village centers, in downtown areas, in place where um, people can walk to work and to services, um, and we're you know, because we're housing um, very you know, low and moderate income people who uh, may not have a car or um, you know easy access to getting around. So the the funding sources prioritize in their sort of their com competitive process um, being in village downtown centers, and so they're looking at the new town center as sort of a way of um, confirming that, that the Fox Run project will be in that type of development, that type of area. So I'm hearing without the designation, this project probably will not go forward. It is, it is a serious risk of, of that. Uh, okay. John, you're on mute. Primarily because of funds, Julie? Yes. So in the, in the fiscal year 22 budget with all the stimulus money or uh, ARPA money, is there money in there for housing that could potentially be used instead? Um, it's to be determined. We have not heard of capital funding in the ARPA money yet, but I think all of the um, that is still being worked out. Um, most of the funds that have been announced that um, I'm aware of so far are that are uh, for housing are for rental assistance. So helping people pay for um, housing. Um, so that's, that is an unknown for us at the moment. Okay. I was on a, a call today with Josh um, and Chris Cochran that was uh, a webinar being hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, and they were talking about these funds, John, and, and it's, it's, it's really what Julie said, there's monies, monies for rent, but the anticipation would be that there will be capital monies coming available, but, but they also stressed that uh, high priority for that will be in these designated areas, either the, the downtowns or village centers, or, or they didn't say specifically new town centers, but that's, that's also one of them. I, I assumed because of the short time frame on the money that shovel ready projects would be more towards the front of the list. Yeah, I think that's, it's probably, a, I know with some of the, with the first round, the CARES Act and the CRF funds, that was absolutely the case. Um, there's still some of those funds um, that are being allocated and, and for projects that could be completed and occupied by the end of 2021, even in some cases, so. But the, the RF funds, it's, again, that's, a, that's an unknown, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I see Matt Moore joined here. Matt, do you want, we're talking about your project here. Do you wanna add to it? Well, it's not my project, it's well. Downstreet's project that we're working on with them. <clears throat> Nope, sorry for being late. I had a family dinner to attend to, so I'll just follow along. Thank you. Any other questions of Julie and her team? Looks like Ken has a Ken. question. I'd just like to ask, so clarify in my mind, are you saying that you, it is, that the designation is important to you, you feel it's critical to your funding, and are you saying that you, that is why you would suggest going along with this project, regardless of what the conditions are? Or the current, let me put it this way, the current <clears throat> conditions as proposed. Is that what, um, that's your position? We would, we'd like to see, we'd like to see the town go forward with the, um, with the designation, with the conditions, understanding as I've, you know, as um, I think Tom and Brandy have explained that that's this, that, you know, the, the state has said that to move forward, it, it's a, accepting the conditions. Um, May I ask 
Julie or Matt a question? Um, would be helpful to know what your time frame is for um, applying for a municipal permit. How quickly do you think you could do that? <clears throat> Well, I, I spoke with Tom a bit about that today and also with Ken. And we think uh, planning for the May uh, DRB for sketch plan is realistic. Whether it's the 4th or the 18th, we're not sure yet. We wanted to try to get in in April, but that's, that's too quick to put things together. So. May is what we're targeting now. So the reason I'm asking that is that there is a window between now and when the town would need to go ahead and adopt new zoning changes, where if applicants come in, they're still under the zoning that's in place now. Um, it's going to take several months before the town would be ready to, to move forward with um, doing further revisions to the zoning and running back through that adoption process. So that is something that the partners in the town could could work on and negotiate with a little bit um, and and um, get that timeline to, to work best for all involved. That's an interesting point. I, I think the, the question then is in what does it does it does an application for sketch plan does that lock us in? Yeah, to, once you've submitted a complete zoning? application, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked at the application contents, but I in a long time, but I'm sure they're they're typical for 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 most uh, you know for most communities. So. Um, we're thinking May. That's that's our that's our schedule that I think will work well for us for a number of reasons. And if it happens to be advantageous for that as well, then <clears throat> perhaps we do that. Ken will just Ken and Jason will. This is where we need to coordinate, and we'd like to put two applications in separate applications for two projects, but have them reviewed concurrently because we'll share an internal driveway and we're both gonna be involved to some extent in what happens with the reconstruction of the mall access road. <clears throat> yeah, and that makes sense. So under Vermont law, once you've submitted a complete application that as long as you stay within the timeline and schedule of the rules, even if the rules change while you're in that process, you, you continue to be regulated under the rules that were in place when you started. Matt, I know I'm hitting your team cold here, uh, but you've done a redesign. I don't know if you're able to share any of that with a share a screen and have people take a look at what you're, what you're thinking. Happy to do that. It'll take me a couple seconds to call it up, but. <clears throat> We haven't even given this a full internal review, which we're going to do this week. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> I was going to say. Nicola, you've seen it. Yeah. And we've shared this with Ken and Jason as well. I'm a few few clicks away here. <clears throat> Folks know that we had to unfortunately make a tough decision to to change from a mixed use building with the child care to solely a residential building. Mm -hmm. But we were able to keep the same <clears throat> unit numbers, so we'll still have 30 units.
Okay, I I can't. I, I'm not finding right away the uh, the civil site plan. Sorry, I got two I'm working with here. But what I do have here is the architectural site plan, which is pretty darn close in terms of concepts. This is a good, okay, share screen. Matt, if necessary, I have the civil site plans. Oh, do you have it handy? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's let's do that if you've got it. Could I, yeah. could I have permission to share a screen? Yes, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. There we go. This is good because it's overlaid on the new town center plan. <clears throat> Can everyone see this okay? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, we we just this shows you know that this is just our civil site plan. So we're just really showing right now our building and parking. You can see this road will go down that go into our parking lot, and this also would be shared with the the mall for that additional plot, the restaurant also um, staying outside of the wetland buffer and just dealing with some of that, those issues there as well. <clears throat> we do have community garden and green space um, on our site as well. And it's three, we're at three stories. Yep. And it is raised there, it's up at a higher level. So, um, yeah, we won't have stairs at this. We won't have an entrance right from that mall road to the to the to Walmart, uh, just because that would actually mean we'd have, need like twenty stairs going up there. So we have a side entrance with parking at the side, and then our main entrance will be around the back. Brandy, um, with with the requirements that this, uh, I take so the affordable housing has been giving a been given a, a, a relief from the conditions of the state. If this was a non uh, how, affordable housing project, there would be required to have an entrance on that on that street. Well, line. the problem is that the state's condition says dimensional waivers and actually as the zoning is written right now, I don't know that you can get out of having an entrance facing the mall road, mm -hmm. which from a elevation point of view is clearly a challenge. Oh, really? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um so it might take, I'm just looking at this. You, it, you need to have an entrance facing a street. So the question is whether your uh, drive where the parking is can be made to meet the street requirements and therefore an entrance off of that side uh, would be meet the requirement to have an entrance facing the street. But that's, that's actually in the design <laughs> standards is not in the dimensional standards. We, we do have a side entrance. Nicola, can you move your cursor over there? Yes. It was already there, right? So that is, that is a secondary entrance. And the, uh, what we call the entry drive would be an internal street, private street. That design is not firm. We have to work that out with the mall and making that more of a street, i.e. angled or parallel parking, green strip, sidewalk, et cetera, is certainly in the cards. <clears throat> so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you just might want to look at that, that piece about the, the design standards component. Thank you. 
Thank you, Matt. Uh, Ken, Ken Simon's here. You want to talk about the mall and? I can stop. I'll stop sharing now. Thank you, Nicola. Yeah, of course. Uh, sure. Um, if, uh, <clears throat> Randy, could you pull up the um, the uh, screen, uh, shared screen of the conceptual plan, the the, the colored plan that shows yeah, yeah. not only I'll do that. Yep. It'll shows, take me just uh, a second, but I'll get shows, it. That also shows the uh, the overlay of the existing Berlin Mall Road. Yep. It's good. You why don't you go ahead and start talking what you were and I'll pull it up as well, I'd rather, I, I've I'd got rather, to open it. I'll, I'll, I'd rather wait. I'd <laughs> oh, rather. okay. I've got to find it here. This uh, 30 units, that's going to be in one building. What are they, one, two, and three bedroom units? Or what, a, what, what do they consist of? Matt or Nicole or Julie? The, the program is the majority are two bedrooms with, I think we have two three bedroom units now. One like, three bedroom, 16 <clears throat> two bedroom, and 11 or 13 one bedroom. I knew I should have waited and just let you answer. <laughs> yes, thir 13 one bedroom, 16 two bedroom, and one three bedroom. Like I said, it's Down Street's project. <laughs> <laughs> How many floors is this? Is it, did I hear three, three floors? Or? Three I mean, floors. That's, that's good enough. That's good enough. Three floors. Okay, so so let me let me just say uh, uh, this may be uh, old news to to many of you, but as you know, uh, <clears throat> since we bought this uh, mall um, over ten years ago, we uh, we have considered ourselves um, uh, as as integral parts of this community, and we have tried to conduct ourselves with the utmost respect and concerns for the char trade area and particularly the town of Berlin. Um, you know, from the time, you know, from the early times from, uh, you know, from the big art, little art sessions to giving community uh, access to our hub space, uh, to events in the parking lot, to events for charities, to bending over backwards to allow the hospital to uh, use our vacant space for COVID testing to make it more convenient for central Vermont residents to uh, get these urgent, uh, urgent uh, COVID shots. We have always been on the side of the community, <clears throat> even when it's not necessary to our advantage. And this is one of them, okay? Regardless of how this turns out, I want you to know that we are totally in line and in unison with the town and will defer to whatever the town wants to do with regard to this project, one way or the other. <clears throat> now, how does this affect? How does this affect? Um, how does this, this affect uh, the, the mall? Naturally, most, if not all, of the mo most of the without, with, except for additional lands, for perhaps that the, with the school property and the <clears throat> hospital property. Most of this new town center development is on our land. Um, where it affects us most, we 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 and um, and Downstreet and Matt have really come to terms and worked together for quite a while, and it's been a great relationship. Uh, and we uh, we really tre treasure the tre treasure the relationship that we've established. And this is re this is literally a shovel ready project. Uh, and some of the things <clears throat> that I'm about to say could impact that shovel ready aspect of the pro of this property. So if you can look at this, this uh, you will see that the current configuration of the Berlin Mall Road, okay, which wraps around, which is wraps around in that direction. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. And we all know <coughs> that it's unfortunate that the Berlin Mall Road is in terrible shape. And it's our intention along with the Fox Run people the town, we've had members, numerous discussions with uh, Tom about this, that the Berlin Mall needs to be repaired. It needs to be repaired quickly in order for this to function, in order for this all to function well. And you will also see 
that the, this Berlin Mall Road is going to be, if the if the dream of the of the town comes to fruition, this Mall route, this the current Ber Berlin Mall Road is going to be relocated. And right, if you can see that how that re how that relocation will take place. And uh, Tom is working diligently to make that happen sooner rather than later. So right now we have a situation where we have we have a deal in place with Fox Run with a few it requires a few tweaks. We have a deal in place that is ready to sign with a restaurant that everybody's going to I'm sure that everybody's going to like. Um, <clears throat> but what what this what the conditions now now dictate is that we would in addition to merely repairing the road which will become obsolete soon. We will have to widen the road to, to allow on-street parking in an area where no one is going to park because there's nothing, to, no reason to park between the restaurant, between the entrance to, to Route 62 and Walmart. There's, no, there's going to be no reason to park on that road. That road, that, so that involves ch changing all the lighting changing all the drainage, widening the road, okay, at a tremendous expense with no, no way to recoup the, the, the expense, okay, with the, with the, under the financial conditions that are already agreed upon. <clears throat> so what we would like to suggest that, the, that if the town is amenable to all the other conditions that are being imposed by the, uh, by the downtown board, we would like to suggest that they add, go back to the, they go back to the board and request a temporary relief for the obligation to change that road, the current road, to meet their requirements. And when a temporary, you know, you can do, you can negotiate what temporary means, whether it's four, four at the four year look back or before the four year look, year look back or whatever it is, but that would make that would truly make this project something that could could get started in the next few months. So I think that uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. But I just want you to know if you if you if you agree to that, that would be great. If you don't agree to it, we're still in total support of what you want to do. Penny, from your perspective, what if we decide not to move forward with this, what changes for the mall? I mean. What changes for the mall? I think if you decide to go, not go with it, um, we would, uh, <clears throat> I think that, uh, I, I think that Fox One would have to talk to, talk you know, decide for themselves whether they want to go ahead with that. I, my, my assumption is from what was, what I was told that they would not want to go ahead with that. And uh, we would have the, uh, we would have faced the decision of going ahead with the restaurant application and a revised master plan that would not include the Newtown Center. Because uh, the Newtown Center would not be uh, something that would be on the, you know, be, be on the drawing boards. We have adopted, we have adopted as an, in an effort to go along with the town to, to, to include the new town center concept plan, the total plan as a part of our master plan. But if that's not, if you, re, if you um, decide not to go ahead with it, we would just have to revise that application. Right. So it's, it's my understanding that we need a final decision to them um, by tomorrow morning. Um, is a straight up yes or no to the to the stipulations, no, no negotiating. Um, and, you know, the caveat or the, the way their email was written, it doesn't, there's not high hopes that we're going to get this designation anyways. Um, well, I, you know, I, I guess I, I've been a developer for a long time, longer than I like to admit in, in public. Uh, but, um, I think if you ask, if you don't ask, you don't get. And if you ask for something that uh, this one change, which is a temporary change, um, 
you know, what do you have to lose? Yeah. Okay. I would agree with you there, Ian. But again, if we, that we, we agree to the stipulations with, I mean, with this temporary relief on that one incident you're saying, and we do not get this designation as Newtown Center, you're saying that Fox Run probably would not go with this plan? I'm not saying that you have to ask Fox Run with that about that. Oh, well, I thought I thought you indicated that if it wasn't a new town center designation, they may not. Is there anybody here from Fox Run? Dave, Dave that's a that's, yeah. Sorry, ahead, Tom. Go ahead, Julie. It just, um, yeah, the project I was speaking about um, is Fox Runs, the affordable housing development that Down Street and Ever North are working on. And then and you're, 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 uh, had said earlier that if it didn't get the Newtown Center designation, that you probably wouldn't get the funding to be able to proceed. That's our concern, yes. Okay. Carla, what, what are your thoughts on this? I just, I haven't heard you weigh in at all, and I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> you may not want, no. Um, so we thought a lot about this, the planning commission, because we were pretty disappointed with the conditions. Um, but my, um, the, the consensus, I mean, I spoke individually with the planning commission members. I didn't, we didn't have time for a meeting. Um, and we all agree that we would like to see uh, us accept the designation with the conditions. Because we feel that getting, you know, it's getting a foot in the door. It's getting, um, it's, you know, we'll have to work hard to, to get the, you know, the conditions met so that we can, you know, it, it can be official. But we feel that that, that, that not take, not accepting the conditions and not um, going forward now that it may not happen at all. And we are very concerned about losing, about the possibility of losing the Fox Run project. Um, so I think, and I'll let other members speak, but, you know, my sense is, is that we, we just think that this opportunity may be the only opportunity to, to move forward. So there, there's not any significant benefit in postponing in any way, shape or form until we can see about the, maybe the section on the mall side of Fisher Road for CVMC or any of that, that you can see. I mean, because that would expand the TIF district potentially, which would allow for additional revenue to the town. But again, it's two or three years, and I know there's a concern about time frame. I think there's one TIF district currently available, maybe left in the state. Is that that accurate? By county. County. By county. Sorry. It, it it's it's true. This is not the ideal situation, but. Um, I'm going to be brutally honest and say that I think this conditional approval has a lot to do with Fox Run. And yeah. I'm afraid that if we don't move forward now and we don't have that Fox Run project in the works, we may not ever get a, a designation. There are some, there are a few groups out there that are quite opposed to this project. Yeah, I, I would agree with, with Carla as well. I think the reason, the, I got the sense that the board would like to provide the designation with the conditions and mostly because of Fox Run. They want to see the housing. And they, I think they want to see something happen in this area of the town. But I'm, there are some groups that are not necessarily against our, our application, but they're against the program. And I think there's a, a danger that the program could die in, you know, in a couple of years, in which case we would never get the designation and we'd lose the benefits. So I think, I, I believe we can get our foot in the, I'm also worried about losing momentum. The residents in the town have, are really anxious to see this go forward. And I know there's been some talk about what's happening and, um, you know, if we kind of come to a halt at this point, it's going to be very disappointing for a lot of people. I mean, yeah, I mean, to me, yeah. 
I'm a pretty simple-minded guy. It seems like we're basing this whole decision on just Fox Run, on what you know. It, that's what it feels like, and, and that's probably not the case. But it feels like we're we're making this decision so we can either get these thirty housing units or not. It, it's more it, to me. It's more about making making the decision because that's the gateway to the designation. I believe that this that the housing is the only reason why this is even happening. And so it's not just for Fox Run, it's that my, I believe, I mean, I believe we have very good intentions with this town center and that, and that we want, you know, listening to some of the board's concerns, you know, I wasn't concerned because I know what our intentions are, but they, they were looking at it differently. And I just think that if we can get the designation, get to work, that we can show them that you know we really are trying to do this right, and we really are trying to meet the the you know the intent of the statute, and um, and and move forward in a, in a way that they would approve that we can that we can get the rest of the land in, and that we you know the, C, the C, CVMC land in, and that we can get to where we want to go. I just think it's going to take longer than I ever anticipated. <laughs> um, but that's maybe I'm being Pollyannish. I don't know, but. Um, I just, you know, we've worked hard and I, 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 I'm afraid that if we stop now, it's just, it's just money that we threw out and we're never going to get the designation. So what is the impact? Um, if they, what is the impact? I mean, how did the, so if we, we said, okay, we accept these conditions and we, we go ahead and we get the new town center. Is there any negative? Um, I mean, it's all, are you saying it's all hundred percent positives that come out well, of it? Well, no, it's, it's negative in that we have to go back and we have to, you know, we have to make some changes and we have to do studies before we can get the CVH, CVMC in, sorry, I'm telling my age. Um, but, um, but again, I think it's doable. I, you know, I don't know. I, I think we can do it. And the negative, I mean, really, Let's face it, if we don't do anything, so you know, so be it. We have the designation and we don't do anything. But if we don't have the designation, we can't do it. So that's my view. So I would say that if you accept with the conditions you've got on the table, you'll in a month or two months, you'll know the outcome of the funding decision. You'd I don't think you're going to get the attention of DHCV to work on these conditions and these zoning changes very quickly anyway, at least not till the legislature is done. And they've also got, I think, as Tom alluded to, a lot else going on, and this is not a high priority for them. So I think you have some time before you have to actually meet those conditions. And so, you know, this is three, four months something like that, five months. If the, the two projects that are on the, in the pipeline now can get into the permitting process, they come in under the current zoning, ameliorating some of the concerns that are raised about the, um, the changes that are being requested, including the one that Ken raised about the street standards. So Ken, if you can get an application in before the rules change, the street, you wouldn't have to do that level of um, change to the street that you're worried about, uh, which is a reasonable concern. Um, Agreed. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> yeah. One potential fly in the ointment of that strategy, Brandy, and I commend you on your strategic thinking, is that we will need to go through Act 250. You will, yeah. and that's—I mean—that's sort of the next. That's the next hoop, and and, for, and I would I, I would suspect that through the Act 250 process, the same the same groups, VNRC and in the agency, the uh, planning department at it, 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 the state, and everybody that cares about this is gonna is gonna want a road with parking and everything that 
that's supposed to be in that road with the new town center. I think that's a that's a that's a big risk that we would take, and we would need to. I don't know how we would get, you know, sign off from Act 250 agreement that they wouldn't make us do that before we apply. Uh, I mean, this is coming down to the to the road, and can I? I totally hear what what you're saying. Is basically why are we going to dump a million dollars into rebuilding a road in its current location uh, when we're going to have to relocate it when when the municipal offices go in? Right, exactly right. So, having said that, and having been so, have been having been through Act 250 twice. And getting approval in what, I, from what I understand, is record time for both Walmart and Kohl's. All I'm asking for is that if you have to get back to the board tomorrow, that your de a designated representative simply ask the chairman of the of the board, J uh, Josh, okay, if they could accept a temporary relief from the obligation to make to uh, add uh, on street parking and whatever else is entailed to the existing Berlin Mall for a period of time. I think, and, 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 and explain the reason why, because it's just gonna be obsolete. It's just as Matt said, you can spend a million dollars and then you're gonna change the, lo the, the location, which means that if you accept the, if, if you accept the uh, conditions as presented, you risk winning the war and losing the battle. So, <clears throat> so I don't think there's any harm in asking before you, before the town makes its final, final, final decision, with a telephone call uh, to uh, to Josh to see if this is something that can, they can live with. <clears throat> Which makes a hundred percent common sense. I personally don't see any. I I personally don't see any. Any harm in asking? Um, you know, I think probably at this point, I think everyone's, you know, made a lot of good points, and I I have no problem with going forward. Um, but I do think that you know we should ask, at least ask uh, for for that time waiver um, for the road. I um, agree. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it makes sense personally. Let me just ask a question here. After this is all developed and these roads are put in, and if they're if they're requiring on street parking and and stuff, who who is going to be responsible for maintaining these roads and the plowing and all that for these roads here? Because if, if they're, if they're going to require, well, I'm just saying if they're going to require on street parking, and it's in there, the town of Berlin doesn't do any plowing on on you know where there's on street parking like you know montpelier and barry and we're not equipped to do the snow removal at this point for those roads that's that's the only reason i'm asking very good point we raised that one already <laughs> great question what's the answer on that? <laughs> they don't care they just want the, the parking um it's your problem to figure out Who's going so to after it's it. developed, do the towns get the town takes responsibility for these roads? Is that's that something that would need to be negotiated, Dave. That's that's correct. Um, okay, that's, so I'm just I'm just it would be with the that's property. That's yeah, that's a great question. We've always been a good citizen, and we will continue to be a good citizen. Yeah, no, I, I you, you guys have been everything I've seen. And, and I and I would like to see this go forward myself personally, of just kind of weighing everything out and uh, you know, just asking the questions. <laughs> we'll figure there's it a out. lot. Of, there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work <laughs> to be done, but we can figure that out. So, John, what was your thought? You were talking about making a phone call. Obviously, if, if we had a deadline of Tuesday morning, uh, is what we heard from the secretary. Then, what are you? What are you? What were you thinking? <clears throat> I, 
you know, I, I think, you know, as part of the motion, we'd ask Tom to um, ask for that stipulation um, in our uh, conditional yes, or uh, we're giving him a, a yes, we'd like to move forward, uh, but we'd ask for a, a conditional waiver of a certain period of time that Ken and our Kenny and uh, Tom can talk about. I don't know exactly what that is, but just, you know, bring it to Josh Hannaford, the, the chair of the board and say, you know, this just doesn't make sense to do it twice. Just give us some time here. Right. And what is, I guess, based on interactions, what, with what we've had so far with them, what, how do you feel they'll respond? Um, I yeah, think I it's say. a common sense. I think it's a common sense question. Ask. It's a reasonable well, it, ask. Just because it's common sense, I guess I don't know that we always know what people are going to say. So. No, no. <laughs> right? But if you don't ask, you don't get. Right. Yeah, I won't speculate well. on uh, what the chairman uh, may say, but um, they can't hurt to ask. Right. Okay. We're supportive so. of that. Ask, Ken. Good. I appreciate that, Matt. Thank you. So you can, when you talk to Josh, tell him that we're supportive of that and that we agree Tom, that that, that Tom, makes Tom sense. Talk to him and if you want me to be on the phone or available, I'll be happy to do that. We're asking, we're, we're applying for funds to Josh, the same Josh, for 250000 probably 500000 for improvements to the road. So maybe the argument to Josh is, do we really want to put state money into a road only to go and tear it up again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Matt, does where? Josh know about, sorry, does Josh know about that yet, do you think? He will tomorrow. His, his, sta his staff knows. Yeah. He should know. I haven't communicated that with him. I don't know if Eileen has. I don't think Eileen has. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the board. I'm not sure that the board fully understands that this is a temporary request. And can by board you mean the downtown board? I mean in downtown. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Downtown. Thank you. Anything else? No, I'm just figuring out exactly what the motion should be. <laughs> <laughs> I think it could be pretty simple here. Um, we've already discussed the Ken thing. That So to be clear, that's not a um, fall on our sword. It's just an ask. So uh, with that being said, I, I make the motion to move forward with uh, approving the conditions set forth by the downtown uh, downtown committee. What is it, Carla? Downtown Development Committee? It's Sorry, downtown board. board. It's actually the, it's staff, actually the staff, staff. Staff recommendation. Staff recommendation. Staff recommendation. The staff board. Okay. Move approval of the uh, downtown development board staff recommendations yeah. and, uh, and yeah. I second that motion. All right. Pretty any, uh, any further discussion? Well, you want, don't you want to request a, a, a waiver or a temporary waiver? That, that's that's a given. Well, yeah, that's that that's something we can do. That was my point about not falling on the sword. It doesn't have to be part of the the motion. We're going to ask that in the morning, but we're we're giving it a, a yes approval um, either way, right? If they say no we're still giving the yes approval. So we left it, we had left it out, but we'll ask. Right. Uh, any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. You know, it's, it's a tough, tough this situation. Yeah, this has not gone as we as I expected. Let, let's just say that. <laughs> Even so, it behooves us to move forward with the conditions, and I'm glad we're going to make that ask. And I'm just so appreciative for all of your perseverance 
and all of the hard work you've all put into this. And, and I would like to really thank the partners. It's been a coalition, yeah. been together yes, for a very you. long time. And so. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Partners, so. And I, and I just want to put a plea out there to CVMC to, we hope that you're hanging in there with us. Yeah. Cause we're going to bring you back in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it, we're, we'll still, you know, as we do the master planning, assume that the with or without being in the um, town center, we'll still want the connection to it. So Excellent. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anything for roundtable, anybody? All right. Do I get, can we get a motion to adjourn? I'm making a motion to adjourn. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye.